In custom car audio, running active means that we're going to use electronic adjustable crossovers for our speakers. These might be on our head unit, our amplifier, or in a digital signal processor. Basically, you're not using a passive crossover, which is a set of electrical components that is often included with component speakers to limit the frequencies going to each speaker. The benefit of running active is you have much more flexibility in the design and tuning of your system, which can result in a much better sounding system. Now, when we are running active, it is a good idea to use a passive crossover of sorts for one particular speaker. And that speaker is the tweeter. We want to protect our tweeters in our system and we do this with a protective capacitor in line with the tweeter. People will use the term base blocker for this protective capacitor as it serves as a high pass crossover. The idea here is that you pick a capacitor value that uses a high pass crossover point that is below where you intend to set your active crossover point. This way, if the active crossover fails, you have the passive crossover in place to serve as protection. Now in a past video here on the channel, I showed you guys how to determine the capacitor value that you need for your application. But I recently got a comment on that video that I would like to investigate. Florian R59 says, don't forget that capacitors can also create latency. So what they're referring to here is a capacitor adding a small amount of delay into the signal. But is it really just a small amount of delay or is it a lot of delay? Will the amount of delay be so much that it's going to potentially ruin the sound of our speakers. I'd like to do a test and find out. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Let's dive on in and take a look. Really quick before we get into the content, a thank you to our sponsor for this episode, Crutchfield. When we go to install an aftermarket car audio system, it can be difficult to know the correct way to take apart the different panels in the vehicle to access things things like our head unit and speakers. That's why I love using this document right here, the Crutchfield Master Sheet. In the Master Sheet, you can see step-by-step -step directions for how to access the car audio parts in your vehicle. For qualifying vehicles and purchases, Crutchfield will include the master sheet with your order. Be sure to check them out, and if you want to save more on your next car audio purchase, you can learn more about a special offer at the links down in the video description. All right, so I've got everything set up for this test. Let me give you a quick explanation. So first here we have my custom boombox build. If you guys wanna see how I built this, you can check that out in that previous video here on the channel. But this is basically a car audio system outside of the vehicle. It's all ran off a 12 volt power supply and you can see I have a set of component speakers along with a head unit powering them. The head unit is set up in active mode so the front two channels power the tweeters and then the rear two channels power the component woofers. On the back side here I can easily disconnect the speakers to isolate them so right now I don't have the woofers connected. I'm not playing the left side tweeter either, the only speaker that is playing is this tweeter here. To provide signal to my system, I'm using this, the JL Audio Max, which is a measurement and tuning device. So you can see it has a set of RCA outputs right here, and those are feeding the auxiliary inputs on the back of my head unit. Also connected to the Max, is this five microphone array. Normally, if we were doing a tune in a car audio application, I would utilize all of these microphones and get a spatial average. That's the point of having multiple microphones. But in this case, we're just doing an impulse response measurement, which only uses one microphone. So I only have this one center mic connected. I'm connected to the Max with my laptop using the Tune 4 application from JL Audio which is what we have going on this screen right here. And you might hear kind of a static noise playing in the background, and that's because I'm playing pink periodic noise out of the max and into our head unit, which is obviously then powering our speaker. What this whole setup is allowing me to do is determine how long it takes from the signal to go from right here on the output of the max into our car audio system, travel through the air and be picked up by our microphone here and then sent back to the max. If anything in that path adds any sort of latency or delay, we're going to be able to pick it up in our measurements. For our first measurement here on the tweeter, we have no protective capacitor at all. To take this measurement, I need to turn up the volume, which is going to be kind of distracting because it's a loud static noise, so I'm going to turn it up and take a measurement, and then we'll look at the results. 
So I'm gonna take my first measurement here and capture it on the screen, which allows us to basically save that measurement. So it doesn't really matter which peak we look at here. I just wanna look at a peak that we can easily locate again. So I'm gonna pick this bottom dip right here. And I can see that if I put my cursor on that, I have 6.38 milliseconds for that cursor point. Now I need to be extremely careful not to move the microphone or move the speaker because it would change my time measurement. But I'm gonna unplug the speaker wire from the back and get this capacitor wired in line. There we go right there guys. So this is now wired in line. And do keep in mind, this is obviously a test setup. We're just doing some testing here. If this was a permanent installation, I would take a lot more time to do that the right way. So let's turn up our volume again here and see how our new measurement compares. So we'll capture that measurement and I'm gonna change that measurement to green just so we can see it a little bit better in contrast to our previous orange measurement. And if we take our cursor and put it down here, you can see that once again, that impulse response is exactly at 6.38 milliseconds. And just to verify that everything's working as intended, let's turn the volume back up and I'm gonna move the microphone ever so slightly. So that means by adding that protective capacitor, there is no change in the amount of delay that's going to be needed for it. Is it possible that it adds just a small, minuscule amount of time? In the grand scheme of things, yes, but for a car audio application, it's not something that we would need to be concerned with. You guys saw I could just barely move our measurement microphone and detect a difference in the amount of time, but when it came to testing between having this on and having it off, there was really no measurement difference whatsoever. Now, some of you might be wondering, how did the protective capacitor change the phase measurement? Luckily, when you capture a trace on Tune 4, it saves all of that information as well. So I was able to look at that, and there was really no change in phase between the two different measurements. I was only able to detect a change in phase far below the crossover point for this tweeter. Now don't forget, next time you want to install a car audio system and you want step-by-step -step directions for disassembling everything, be sure to check out the master sheet from our show sponsor, Crutchfield. Learn more and save at the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them, along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching.